we know that the limit of quantitation or quantitation limit or LOQ is undoubtedly very important characteristic of analytical test procedure. Uh, and when it comes to analysis of nitrosamine, the LOQ can open you a different door of opportunities when it comes to routine testing, skip testing or omission from the specification. You may be thinking what I am speaking all about. So without wasting much of the time, let us now understand what is the significance role of limit of quantitation when it comes to nitrosamine test procedure. How your LOQ will be able to allow you from testing your all batches for nitrosamine content. How your limit of quantitation can help you to completely omit the specification for nitrosamine. I hope you find this uh, topic very interesting and let us begin with the discussion with the point number one. So where does nitrosamine LOQ helps us? So the nitrosamines LOQ can help you in understanding whether your method is suitable for routine testing, whether your method is suitable for allowing you for the skip testing. Similarly, whether your method is suitable so that you can omit the specification of nitrosamine completely. So there is no need of testing the nitrosamine for the product. But there are certain conditions to avail those benefits. And that is the purpose of making today's video. So what is the relevancy of LOQ with respect to the routine testing? We all know that the nitrosamines are mutagenic impurities. Not only that, they are also classified as the cohort of concern. Now what is the cohort of concern? It is highly potent mutagenic impurities having TD50 value less than 1.5 milligram per kg per day. And that's what it is controlled at very low level. Like if you look at the limit of uh, NDEA, you will find it is 26.5 nanogram per day. It is too low. So the sensitivity of analytical method is a paramount importance when it comes to nitrosamine. And that's the reason when it comes to routine testing or qualifying your batch product with respect to nitrosamine content, you must also understand what is the need of my methods sensitivity and i'm going to talk about these three important regulators fda ema and nvisa so according to fda in case of your maximum daily dose now your maximum daily dose is going to be a defining parameter and in case if your maximum daily dose is less than a gram per day so in that case the LOQ at or below 0 0.03 ppm is the requirement. In case if maximum daily dose is greater than 1 gram, 1 gram per day, then your LOQ of analytical test procedure should be at least equal to 26.5 nanogram divided by MDD. Now, why this 26.5 nanogram? Because if you look at the current uh, nitrosamine specified into the FDA's guideline, you will find NDEA is having the least limit which is 26.5. So according to that and as the maximum daily dose increases, the risk also increases. So because of this conservative approach, FDA must have defined the LOQ requirement which is the highly potent nitrosamines and that is NDEA. So if you look at the limit of NDEA, it is 26.5 nanogram per day. So divided by MDD is going to give the LOQ in terms of PPM. So in case if the maximum daily dose is 1200 milligram, so LOQ in terms of PPM is going to be a 0 0.02 PPM. 26.5 nanogram per day divided by 1200 mg per day gives 0 0.02 PPM. So if I have to correct this formula, I can say that this is LOQ in terms of the PPM. And 
then this is the answer that in case of your maximum daily dose is 1200 milligram per day then your LOQ in ppm should be at least 0 0.02 ppm or less than 0 0.02 ppm when it comes to EMA what is the limit of quantitation requirement for routine testing EMA says that your LOQ should be equal to or less than acceptable intake so what is the acceptable intake of NDEMA, uh, sorry NDMA, it is 96 nanogram per day and I'm going to explain you how you can define the minimum LOQ requirement for NDEMA according to EMA guideline. So the LOQ, in a, LOQ for NDMA in PPM is equal to acceptable intake divided by maximum daily dose. Remember, acceptable intake should be in nanogram per day and MDD should be in milligram per day so for your understanding let me put the units also over here so that you will not get confused and mdd is in milligram per day so now this is the calculation formula you can use to determine the concentration in terms of ppm in terms of ppm so loq for ndma in ppm is equal to what acceptable intake in nanogram per day divided by maximum daily dose in milligram per day let us understand with the help of one example and in this example I have considered the maximum daily dose of the product is 500 milligram. So by using the calculation formula you can easily calculate that the LOQ requirement for NDMA is 0.2 ppm. So if I have a test procedure with the LOQ of 0.2 ppm or less than that then this method stands suitable to analyze routine batches to release the all routine testing 0.2 ppm becomes my requirement for LOQ what is the NVISA requirement NVISA Brazil also says that the LOQ should be less than or equal to acceptable intake so you can take the same example as like we explained in terms of EMAS guideline so this is the routine testing requirement for FDA EMA and NVISA let us talk about the second point that is skip testing. So if you like, if you look at the three regulators, FDA, EMA and NVISA, FDA has not provided any such guidance. That means you cannot employ skip testing in case of FDA. You have to test all the batches for the nitrosamine content. But, but when it comes to EMA, EMA has uh, provided the guidance on when skip testing is possible. So what EMA says that in case if the, the content of nitrosamine is less than or equal to 30 percentage of its acceptable intake, then your product can get the skip testing approval. That means the content of nitrosamine should be less than 30 percentage of its acceptable intake. Now the question here is to confidently declare that the content of nitrosamine is less than 30 percentage of its acceptable intake, what should be my methods LOQ? It must be less than or equal to 30 percentage of the acceptable intake. So unless and until I have a test procedure which has a LOQ less than 30 percentage of its acceptable intake, I will not be able to declare, I will not be able to quantify whether the given nitrosamine is less than 30 percent or more than 30 percent of its acceptable intake. So to get the skip testing for EMA, for European market, my methods LOQ should be less than 30 percentage of its acceptable intake. Let us take an example and we will then under discuss further. So what is the acceptable intake of NDMA? It is 96 nanogram per day. So 30 percentage of NDMA acceptance intake will become 28 point nanogram per day. This is the 30 percentage of its uh, respective acceptable intake and further what is the LOQ concentration requirement in terms of PPM? It is the 30 percentage of acceptable intake absolutely in terms of nanogram per day 
and maximum daily dose in milligram per day. Always remember this calculation formula. And when I consider my maximum daily dose is 500 milligram. Let us see what is the LOQ requirement I get then. So LOQ is equal to now 28.8. Why 28.8? I have not considered 96 nanogram per day, but I have considered 28.8. And here is the answer for that. I need to understand the acceptable intake. The, sorry, I need to understand the 30 percentage of the acceptable intake and it is 28.8 nanogram per day for NDMA. So 28.8 by 500 milligram, which is my maximum daily dose, I got 0 0.06 ppm. That means the 30 percentage concentration in terms of ppm is 0 0.06. And if I have to prove that the LOQ, uh, the content of NDMA is at 30 percent or below that, at least my minimum requirement is 0 0.06 ppm is the LOQ. If I do not have the LOQ of 0 0.06 ppm, how can I precisely, accurately quantify the nitrosamine, the NDMA at this level? And for that reason, my LOQ should be at least 0 0.06 ppm or less than that. So this is the requirement for skip testing when it comes to European countries. What is about the Envisa Brazil? Envisa also has not accepted the skip testing uh, provision. So for FDA and Envisa, you may not be able to get the skip testing, but certainly you can able to get for European countries, provided your LOQ of nitrosamine test procedure is less than 30% of its acceptable intake. The next point, Omission from specification. So is it possible to completely remove, omit the nitrosamine testing from, from the given product? That means you conduct the uh, risk assessment and you identify that as a part of your process, there is no presence of nitrosamine impurity into a sample. Then probably this omission from spec is allowable. But what is the definition of uh, the absence of nitrosamine impurity into a given sample? You may have the content, let us say 5% or 10% or 20%. So which level can be claimed as the absence of the nitrosamine in a given sample? And in case if you have that particular figure, then you will be able to declare whether the content of nitrosamine is present in a given sample or absent in a given sample and in case if it is absent then you can certainly omit that particular impurity from the specification let us understand the omission from specification with respect to these three regulators fda ema and envisa brazil so what is the fda's guidance so fda is not allowing the omission of the nitrosamine impurity from the specification See, as a part of your risk assessment, you, you conclude that, you know, there is a possibility of formation of nitrosamine impurity into your product. Then there is a need of routine testing for all the batches for nitrosamine. This is the requirement of FDA. What is the EMA? European country says, in case... The European country says that in case if the content of uh, nitrosamine impurity is less than or up to 10 percentage of its acceptable intake, then there is no need to test product for the nitrosamine content. That means you can omit, you can remove the nitrosamine impurity from the specification. Now, having understood the requirement that yes, I need to understand whether the content of nitrosamine impurity is less than 10% or not. What is the method's requirement? My method's LOQ should be at least 10%, right? In case if my method's LOQ itself is not 10%, how am I going to quantify the nitrosamine at around 10% level, which, is, which should be accurate and precise, by the way? Not possible, right? And for that reason, my LOQ should also be less than or equal to 10 percentage of its acceptable intake. If it is less than 10 percent, it is well and good, but it should not be more than 10 percentage of the acceptable intake. What about the NVISA? NVISA also talks about the similar language. 
because in which I also said that the content of nitrosamine below 10% it treated as like it is absent and hence if it is absent then there is no need to include the nitrosamine impurity into a specification there is no need to test that specific nitrosamine impurity routinely to release your batch and hence you can omit that impurity from the specification so i hope you now must have understood what is the important what is the role of limit of quantitation in deciding on routine testing skip testing and omission from the specification thank you so much